And the longer the journey, the farther the distance, the more difficulties and sidetracks and obstacles and disappointments and life decisions and dedication that you have to make. And that's what makes success so difficult to get. Most people are not willing to take that long trip to success. You have to have that dedication or that discipline to, to show up and do that stuff, especially when you don't want to. Today I have the pleasure to sit down with Dewey Cooper. And Dewey's got uh, over 250 fights between your, your amateur and professional career. He has over 250 fights, uh, mostly in kickboxing. Yes. So he has some boxing and some MMA stuff in there too, yeah. Yes, yes. And you know, Dewey's one of the, the best trainers. He's out here in Las Vegas, trained a lot of champions, trained a lot of the top guys in UFC and other organizations. And um, I'll, let, I'll let you tell your, your story yourself. but. Um, uh, you know, and you got a, a gym that you opened. So yes. tell me a bit about your gym and then some of your background of, uh, you know, why you've taken this path. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Dewey Black Cobra Cooper. I started doing martial arts at the age of nine years old. Um, martial arts has taken me all around the world and taken me out of a lot of bad places. I grew up in Los Angeles, you know, in the late 70s, early 80s, early 80s. And all you guys who know who knows the story about Los Angeles in the early 80s when the gang banging thing broke loose and the crack epidemic and all that shit happened. Uh, neighborhoods got really violent. A lot of murder, a lot of arrests, a lot of destruction. Well, martial arts kept me away from that type of lifestyle. I'm the youngest of eight. Um, I have older brothers who were, you know, serious gang members and drug dealers and all of that. And I'm proud to say at the age of 47, I've never smoked anything in my life, weed, cigarettes, nothing. I don't drink alcohol, I don't do any of that stuff. And I owe all of that due to martial arts training. It really gave me direction, focus, and basically kept me out of being murdered or, or thrown in prison from doing the bad things. So I'll say that first. Moving along, I won many world championships as an amateur. I won two world championships as a professional kickboxer myself. Um, I fought some of the greatest fighters ever in the sport. Also, as a coach now, I'm retired as a coach. I've won 10 world titles. I'm one of the only guys who won a world championship as a coach in every fighting discipline, hmm. professional boxing, professional kickboxing, the UFC title that Fresh and Gutto took early last year in 2021 and the Bare Knuckle Boxing Championship. I was Christina Fierro's coach when she won the, the Bare Knuckle Boxing World mm. Championship and she just won another one just yesterday. Congratulations to her. Um, you know, so fighting has taken me far throughout my professional career and now as a coach professional fighting, all aspects of, of fighting have, have taken me far. We have a new gym that we opened here in Las Vegas late October through 2021 called Split T Boxing, BKMMA. We're at 4360 Blue Diamond Road, Suite 101, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89139. Anyway, enough of the shameless plugs. Today I'm here with Derek and he told me he wanted to talk about success, what it takes to be successful, what route, you know, the trials and tribulations of success. So I'm gonna open up by asking you, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna state a quote that I, I, I made up back in 1992, and we'll talk about it as we go. Not to take over your show, but back in 1992, my senior year in high school, I made a quote because I was doing martial arts and playing sports and all the stuff that young kids do. And I created a quote that I live by to this day. And that quote is, people will forgive you for anything except being successful. <laughs> and later on, as we discuss, I'll tell you what does that mean. But people will forgive you for anything, Derek, except being successful. What, does, what comes to your mind when you hear something like that? I, I wouldn't hang out with those type of people that I really wouldn't. I like to spend time with people that, um, you know, the same way that you have the warmth in your voice when you say, you know, oh, I, I help these people like, like, you know, Christine, that she has won the her bare knuckle fight again. Yes. I watched that last night, yes. by the way. Yes. I went to the UFC fights in person here in Vegas. And then later at night, I watched a bare knuckle fight. So I, I didn't know that you were affiliated with her yeah, when I watched yeah. that fight last night. Yeah, yeah. We, the girl she fought real fast, 
Britton Hart. Mm -hmm. We fought her about two and a half years ago. Christina knocked her out in the second round. So, you know, uh, yeah, Christina's a, a killer. But I'm to, proud of her anyway. The way, the warmth in your voice when you say, you know, that you, you helped that person win, you know, um, I feel like that about my clients. When my clients are doing good, um, I, you know, they, they say, oh, thank you. I owe it all to you. I said, no, I mean, you, you did 90% of that. Yes. You know, 90% of that you did yourself. Uh, I can't be responsible for somebody else's success or failure, but I can point them in the right direction. I can tell them what to do. I tell them, you know, the consequences of, hey, if you go down this path, you could expect this outcome. If you go down that other path, you probably expect an outcome down here, you know? Yes. And you're going to choose for yourself what you're going to do. So I, I could take a, a few percent of the credit <laughs> for their success, perhaps. But, um, you know, a, a good coach, in my mind, when I'm coaching clients, when I'm tra you're trying to mentor my clients to have the best outcomes for themselves, uh, I don't want them to do what I did. I want them to do even better. Yes. I want them, you know, I think that's what a good coach, like, you don't want them to do what you did. You want them to do, yes. you, know, Super you want to train, the, train them with the best skills that you've procured over the years yes. and let them, you know, after they have those fundamentals, they can you know, put, uh, interject their spirit or their that's personality right. and, right. and do even better in some way. So Absolutely. I don't, I literally, I don't hang out with losers that um, my friends are, the people I call my friends to be happy to see me winning more. You know, the people that I'm around, when I see them winning, I'm, I'm excited for them. That uh, I think that rising tide brings us all up, and I feel great about it. So, yes. But I know a lot of people are that way, you know? Yes, A lot yes. of people, it, it hurts their heart to see somebody they came up with that they could have been that person, they could have they could have done that together, and one of them slacked off, and the other, you know, did their thing, and yes. they have some some real hatred. Some of your, some of your closest friends, friends, would have the most hatred in their heart to see you succeed even more. Yes. They try to pull you down. They try to yes. hold you back, and it's sad. A lot of a lot of people get stuck yes. because of that. But what does it mean to you? Well, how do you think well, about it? The quote I I made up back when I was in high school: "People will forgive you for anything except being successful." Really means a lot to me because it made me realize that when you're focused and when you're on that journey towards success, man, there's so many sacrifices you have to make. There's so many things you have to really compartmentalize to even be on the right journey. Um, success is a, is a very vague thing, but it's, it's so, it's so, uh, is so solid in each of our minds. Like your level of success may be different from my level of success, different from his level of success, et cetera. Um, but to me, success is a destiny. It's at some point you decide to, I want to be this, I want to accomplish this. So it's a destiny, that, a destiny that you put in your mind. And if it's a destiny, there's obviously a destination in which we have to go through. And through that destination is the importance of the success. That journey to get to that destination is the most important part of success. And here's where a lot of people fail, man. The journey to get to that success you want, to get to that, to accomplish that goal or reach where you wanna reach in life is a very difficult one, man. The journey is so, so murderous and adventurous and, and crucial and the obstacles and the ups and downs and, there's so many intangibles that go through it, it's really hard to explain. That's why when I see a successful person, I, could, I, I, I just look at them with a smile, handshake and admiration because it's so easy to be derailed from your goals. For instance, I'll do it in an MMA cont context because we both know the sport of mixed martial arts. Your, 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 your cameraman's goal may be to be tough enough champion, little amateur championship here in, in Las Vegas. Your goal is to be the tough enough champion. So you go join a gym, you train for a year, you start doing amateur fights. Now the pool of guys that you have to fight are definitely most of the time national guys. Most of the time they're regional guys, you know, Western region. You might fight a guy from Utah, Arizona, California. They may fly in a guy from New York, but you know, they, they wanna keep the budget low. So you're, you're getting regional talent and you may win a tough enough championship and you feel like, yo, I'm successful, I accomplished my goal. The level of success you have 
takes the destiny further and further away. So the guy who wanted to be tough enough champion, he had a, a short a short trip. The journey wasn't very long. You could be tough enough champ in two years, uh, starting off fresh. Now you want to be UFC champion, the destination's way farther. You have to go through the same steps that you went through for tough enough. You have to be good enough on the amateur circuit. Then you have to get a manager who's really who's willing to navigate you and get you the right fights. You have to join a small MMA circuit, kick ass there, beat people there, most likely win a championship there. Then you might get a call to be on Dana White's contender series or whatever. And you have to fight another dude who's done the same things you've done, beat him by, you know, stunning fashion. And then you get that UFC contract. And here's where the destiny gets crazy because you get the UFC contract, you're one of over 500 guys. <laughs> if there's 100 guys, you got a 1% chance of success winning that championship title you want. If there's 500 guys, you have 0.2% chance of winning that championship that you want. So in order to get in the UFC and kick everybody's ass and get popular and get a following and 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 get to the top 15 and then get to the top 10 and then get to the top five and then fight the champ and defeat him is a serious journey. It's it's a long destination, man. It's like it's like flying from here to the moon from that guy who just started out who dreams about being a UFC champion. So that level of success is so great because of the journey. Both levels of success are the same. I want the tough enough belt. You want the UFC belt. Once once I got the tough enough belt, I was happy and exhilarated and felt accomplished. But the journey wasn't as great as their UFC strap. They're both success, but the destination's way different. And that's where the appreciation and the admiration comes from. And the longer the journey, the farther the distance, the more difficulties and sidetracks and obstacles and disappointments and life decisions and dedication that you have to make. And that's what makes success so difficult to get. Most people are not willing to take that long and trip to success they you, want it you made it sound easier than it is <laughs> oh yeah but you made it sound easier than it is. <laughs> but think think all through the think of the politics think yes. all the little political things where like if you're doing good in a in when the low level organizations yes. you start getting doing good there somebody's gonna want to promote their guy and they're gonna yes. be hating on you and yes. they're gonna give you you're not gonna have a fight or you're going to have a very difficult fight, yeah, and they're going to help somebody else pad their record. Yes. So you're going to have political issues down there. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. So you're going to have those political issues too. You're going to do this with almost no budget because yes. at that level of fighter, no if you ain't if free. you ain't training all day, then you ain't going to have the skill set, and you're about to get whooped. Yes. And if you are training all day, then you don't you know you're not working to, to build uh, income. Yes. As much as you you might like to. Yes. So you're going to be having a below average income getting beat up every day in a, yes. in a gym, you know, yes. six days a week. Yes, and then that's where the support system, the belief, getting with the right team and a coach who believes that you have those intangible skills to get you to higher levels, to be willing to invest the time into you because we ain't getting paid nothing either. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and girlfriends, friends want you to go out and smoke weed and get drunk at the <laughs> frat parties and all of this. You know, there's so many sacrifices you have to make is just crazy so by the time you start doing pretty good and you start building that following then you have a lot more of those things so yes. you, or you got a whole little entourage that wants to follow you <laughs> around and encourage you to do stupid shit that's gonna yes. destroy your career yes destroy your future so from i've been fighting a long time as a kid all the way through and I've been applauded and standing ovations. I've been booed and people said they hated me. I've had all, all, I've been death threats sent to me, all <laughs> kind of crazy. Uh, but what kept me focused and everyone who knows me, anyone who's trained with me from day one, you know, you mentioned Tito Ortiz. Tito would fly, would, would bring me out to Big Bear when he was, when he was champ. I used to spar with him. He was scheduled to fight Vitor, Vitor Belfort twice. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, well, I think it was three times. The first time, one guy got injured. The next time, another guy got injured. Third time, they finally made it happen. Tito brought me into camp for all those camps because I was a natural southpaw with good hands and 
all of that. So me, Tito and I'm I go way well, back, yeah. you know, he, we, we go way back. But all the guys, Tito, all those guys, whoever you name who knows me knows since way back then my work ethic was immense. I trained hard. It was a lifestyle for me. I was completely dedicated completely dedicated to what my goals were to reach this level of success that I've made. A lot of people see me and, and think it was easy, man. I, I miss parties. I broke up with girlfriends. You know, I, I lost a lot of friends and a lot of great memories due to this martial arts stuff because I wanted to reach a certain level of success. And it happened for me. And then the whole world opens, opens up. So are you gonna get this instant gratification or are you gonna delay it and really step into your greatness is a, is, is a big question that a lot of people don't understand when they're aiming for these type of things also. But I always have a method to everything. I'm a method guy. That's what Black Cobra Striking Systems is all about, it's a method. So I developed a six step philosophy that if anyone in the world exercises, they will be successful in whatever they wanna do. I have a feeling you're going to tell us about it. Yes, <laughs> if you want me to. <laughs> Let's, I, I do. I want to talk about Tito for one second. You know, Tito is a, he stayed at my house uh, ten days ago. He was with me. For, you know, spent a couple of nights. Spent three days with me. And you know, Tito's. Uh, you know, he's been retired for years. Yes. And oh, he he got five six back surgeries. Yes. And he, he's still moving good, Dis, yeah. despite you know, the kind of work ethic that guy got. He yeah. still kept himself in great shape. Yes. We were just wrestling and wrestling and wrestling and wrestling for 10, 11 hours together, yeah. you know, a week and a half ago. Yes, yeah, and, he worked uh, hard. He worked extremely anything, hard. You know, so, once in a while, somebody they hears that name and you know, they hear that, that bad boy image or the marketing yeah. image that he created yeah. during his career, and they think uh, he's that type of person. Awesome you know? guy. And Sweet any, guy. any plans I ever made with Tito, he shows up on time. Yes. He goes out of his way to, he shows up early. He goes out of his way to be very polite. And yes. He's been a real professional and fantastic guy. So he's a guy that I like a lot. But and, yeah, uh, Tito's an awesome guy. I got a lot guy. of respect for Tito. Yeah, I just talked to him online maybe three or four days ago. I was showing my daughter doing basketball. He came on. Uh, yeah, Tito's an awesome guy. The, the bad boy image, that was a persona f to put him in fight mode. As far as a person, awesome guy, super cool. Guy. I like the band a lot. Tell us about this six step striking system, sir. Well, not, not striking system, six steps to achieve your, your goals, your success, whatever that may be, whether you're a businessman, fighter, s student, whatever. I developed a six step philosophy that if you practice for sure, you will accomplish your goals. And we talked about success being a destiny, being a destination, a destination being a journey you have to take to get to that success. I had to call it Dewey six D's to destiny. And those are dedication, determination, discipline, devotion, desire, and drive. Dedication. Um, whatever you want to succeed in, um, we can have, all have these dreams of grandeur, like, um, you know, King David or whoever the hell you want to be and, and just sit on it and not do anything to achieve it. Anytime you, you set a goal for yourself or set a certain thing you want to be successful at, you have to really be dedicated towards whatever that is. Without dedication, nothing happens because dedication is that hunger that no matter how you're feeling, what you're going through, you're going to, you're going to, you know, keep doing the work you have to do, keep chugging that engine to get to that desired destination. Now, you know, some people talk to me about, the, you know, they say, Derek, Derek, you know, I, I, sometimes I'm not motivated. How do you stay motivated all the time? Now you said the word dedication. I, I say the word discipline in this place. I, yeah. I'm not motivated all the time either, man, but I'm also not a bitch. <laughs> so there's times I wake up and, you know, I, I might tell my girl, you know, I say, hey, I got to do this, this, this today, and I don't feel like it. And she knows I'm going to go do it. We laugh yeah. about it, you know, be like, well, but I'm also not a bitch. So I got to go do, you know, time to wake up and go do the thing. Don't matter if I slept three hours. Don't matter what else is happening in my life. If, you, if you're supposed to, if you had a real goal, you have to have that dedication or that discipline to, to show up and do that stuff, especially when you don't want to. The most important thing I think I've learned is that real estate is not just a focus on one stream of income. You can make plenty of money with different type of streams of income. We spoke about it when we met yesterday. It's not just a rental property. 
you can flip a house, you can sell it, Airbnb, um, is parking garages, commercial real estate. Um, so the thought of only single family home and only renting it out. There are multiple um, ways you can go about creating a different stream of income when it comes to real estate. How this is going to help me uh, throughout my journey and in the future is that my mind is open knowing that I don't have to focus on one specific route when it comes to real estate. And the advice I would give another person getting into real estate is that you just gotta have to do it. I think the great thing about this program is that you get a solid foundation of the things that you need to know. So it will be easier for you to take action when the time is right.